Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. Just a couple of things before we get started. Um, settle in. And uh, if you have any questions for the chamber or you have feedback, please send them to info at windsoressexchamber.org. That will be posted in the chat section. As well, for COVID updates and helpful resources, always visit our website. We have a COVID tab that is updated daily. So um, check that out. That resource link will be in the chat as well. And we do post on social media. We have a Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram account, and those handles will be posted in the chat section as well. View our previously recorded webinars on our YouTube channel, but they can also be found on our website. Um, if you've missed any of them, they are all up. This webinar will also be recorded, and uh, you can view again by the end of the week. So we'll take another minute to let um, more of our attendees join before we get started. Okay, at this time, I'm going to pass it over to our president and CEO, Rakesh Nadu. Thanks, Marina, and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the webinar series. Uh, it's good to have you back here for those that are returning and for those that are joining us for the first time. Uh, this is a series of webinar that the Chamber is offering uh, to the entire community. Uh, as you know, there is no cost to attend. Our intention is to help support the business community and the citizens of the Windsor-Essex region. And as Marina mentioned, uh, if there are any comments that you have, any questions you have, uh, please feel free to uh, uh, ask us through the chat box. And also, if you have any suggestion or inputs for the chamber, please feel free to reach out to us at info at windsorsxchamber.org. So, you know, the, um, the sun is out, uh, the weather is uh, getting better, uh, businesses are reopening. So it seems like we are heading in the right direction. But there are still a lot of issues, as we know, those of us that are running businesses, that those of us that are hoping to get our businesses up and running, uh, and those of us who are looking forward to returning back to work, we know that there are several issues out there. Uh, so we haven't yet uh, reached a point where we can, you know, take it easy or we can um, throw caution to wind, uh, which would be very detrimental uh, to all the good work that has been done uh, over the last eight to eight to ten weeks. So, um, as we continue reopening the economy, you know there are businesses that will come up with issues that we may not have seen uh, coming come up. Uh, there may be difficulties. There may be uh, challenges uh, that would come up from time to time. And as chamber, uh, we are here to work with you to help resolve that and, and address those issues. So if you, while you reopen the, your business, if you come across uh, a situation or uh, a particular issue uh, that is affecting your business or issue that uh, could be addressed, which would make it easier for business like yours and the others to open up, please feel free to let us know about that. And again, you know, send us those issues. We connect with us through uh, my colleagues at the chamber or send us your email through info at windsoressexchamber.org. And we know that there are issues. Uh, there is the additional cost of compliance. Uh, we know that uh, a lot of businesses will have reduced volume of business uh, because of social distancing requirements. Uh, so less number of, uh, of customers and clients but uh, increased cost of compliance. We are very much aware of that. And uh, we are talking to various levels of government to address that because it is, how do we really provide the incentive for companies to reopen, uh, for businesses to reopen? That's going to be key. Uh, there was a report that came out this morning from uh, BC where you know, BC has opened up businesses um, so they can reopen. 
but a lot of businesses are choosing not to reopen and it's because of the cost, cost of compliance and reduced business volume. So many are questioning whether it is, you know, a good idea to reopen or not. And uh, we need to learn from that experience and we need to find ways in which we can help our businesses in reducing that cost of compliance. Uh, hopefully there's some assistance. So we are advocating and we're lobbying the government for that. So again, feel free to, you know, to provide us some inputs from your end as well. Uh, the rent relief uh, program, uh, the commercial rent relief program, we know that that's not enough. Uh, there is more help that is needed, uh, especially you know, to ensure that uh, business volume or the, the hit to business, which is 70% or more, uh, that ceiling can be lowered a bit and we can also encourage landlords you know, to participate in the program. So stay tuned for that because there is work going on to make that program a little bit more uh, accessible. Uh, but there's some good news in terms of what's being done uh, locally. You know, we've got the city council that's waiving fees and speeding up approvals for outdoor patios and also for closing some streets so that, you know, more restaurants can have uh, patios and, you know, they can spread out the patios in such a way that more customers and clients can be served. So that's a very welcome initiative. We, we uh, applaud the local government for that. Uh, SIBA program, which was earlier on restricted uh, for small and medium-sized companies that didn't have a payroll of uh, 20,000 or less, uh, that has now been opened up. So many businesses, uh, startup companies should be able to take advantage of that. So I think that's a program that has been tweaked in the right direction. Uh, and then if you are a company that has been notified that you can apply for the uh, Canada Summer Jobs program, uh, just know that uh, tomorrow is the last day for application. So keep that in mind if you're interested in tapping this program. And if you've been invited, I would strongly suggest that you look into this program because 100% of the wages are going to be reimbursed through this program. So good initiative from the federal government. So again, uh, you know, uh, reopening time, businesses are opening up, a lot of businesses have opened up. And at this time, it is very important that we support these businesses in whatever way we can. Uh, more importantly, we identify what is it that we are buying and is there a company that is in our area, that is in a region that can supply what you need. And if they have, then go reach out to them and buy local. This is going to be very important for us to support our, our regional economy, our local economy by supporting our local businesses. It is anyway challenging to open up the business at this time. So any support, any additional order that they receive will be a big booster and a big help for them. So I urge you again to look into that and support the local economies. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn, you, uh, turn it over to my colleague, uh, Marina, and she's got a great panel today. Uh, we're talking about networking, very important uh, in any environment, especially in this environment. Uh, we've got uh, some very successful people who are on the panel today and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from them. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Marina. Thank you. Thank you, Rakesh. Thank you so much. And thank you all uh, for joining us today. Like Rakesh said, my name is Marina Poljak and I'm the event coordinator for the Windsor Essex Regional Chamber of Commerce. And I want to thank you for joining us where we'll talk about the art of networking. The Chamber has a lot of events throughout the year and um, all of them can be considered networking events for sure, but the Chamber has been hosting the after business networking events for 37 years and this topic ties so closely to that. And for the past two years, this event, the, the networking events, have been my baby. I've been coordinating them and it's been such a pleasure to put, to put those on for the business community. Um, I am I've seen a lot of these connections happen and I, and I can see the value at every single one of them. And our panelists today will be talking about the importance of finding a way to network. They will be talking about their own journey. So whether you are a loyal attendee of our events or other community events, or you're new and you're just getting started with your career and need some um, advice and want to make new connections, then this webinar is for you. So with us today, we have a panel uh, which consists of Elizabeth Elias Hernandez. We have Mike Clark, Brian Yeomans, and Candice Dennis. Today's, thanks guys. Uh, today's discussion will start with Elizabeth. Elizabeth is the Director of Business Development for Barker, Parker DKI. She also has a background in sales and marketing in the hospitality industry. She has been an active chamber member throughout her whole career, kudos. 
and is well connected in the community, loves to meet new people and connect with others. Elizabeth has served on several boards and committees, including as president of the Windsor Essex Business Exchange, the board member of the Canadian Condominium Institute, and committee chair of our very own BEA. And the floor is all yours, Elizabeth. Thank you. Uh, welcome and thank you, Marina uh, Rakesh, the entire uh, chamber for allowing me to speak along with these fellow networking uh, uh, members that I see frequently in the after five business. So it's pretty, pretty good to speak today. Um, so the questions that you were asking us to talk about today was how we got started networking. And for me, I think um, when I started my career in the hotel management, it, we were supposed to be going out, making sales calls and build that relationship uh, in the community. So it was about opportunities. Uh, networking is about building relationship and seeking opportunities, whether it's for business or personal. Um, for the last 13 years before Parker DKI, I, I was actively um, networking with the chamber as well with uh, a not-for-profit organization that was on boards and committees. That's how I build up my relationship in the community. When I wanted to jump ship from the uh, hotel industry, my advantage with Parker DKI was like, I already know all these people. People do business with who they like. So that was my advantage with them. And to build a relationship with insurance was an easy task for me as I'm already a social butterfly by nature. Um, so then when we say, why, why did we uh, decide on um, personal networking skills? That was one of the other questions that um, Marina asked me to talk about. You guys have to think about people trending um, the, why networking is more of a strategic process. Um, so you wanna see who you're connecting with. For me, when I worked at Parker DKI, I didn't know a lot of insurance people, only a few that I've come across, obviously my personal insurance and other um, boards that I've come across, but not everybody. So my goal at Parker DKI was to go out and visit every insurance broker in the city and Leamington in the county, because we do have an office there. Um, so I was going there on a regular basis to build that relationship, just dropping some Parker DKI candies. Don't know if any insurance people are here, but uh, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, we do have Parker DKI jars in each offices. So it's an excuse to go in and fill them up and say hi, not to sell, not to just to keep on a touch, right? And keep everybody um, um, to know that we're there for them if they have any questions. Uh, so that's how I started with building relationship with insurance. And um, one of the key points I would say is that once you meet them, go on LinkedIn. I actually went on LinkedIn and added every insurance person in the area uh, on my LinkedIn and met them. And that's how you keep recognize their face and, and, and um, be able to uh, share um, common grounds and build that relationship. So as I mentioned, um, you know, what the key about networking is to build relationships. So I, one, one of the things of my strategic stories I wanna say is, um, because uh, Cypher system was a little bit harder to go in, I remember this uh, story when um, I went to the uh, office and I thought, okay, this is a great gate gatekeeper. If you've ever been to the Cypher system office, it's pretty intimidating. You go in, it's just big front, front desk and one person there. And so how do you get to the owners and how do you talk to them? So I was going through Snap Magazine, which um, I advocate of looking at community events. As a networker, I'm sure everybody, that's a good tip to go into. Um, I went into the, um, to the Snap Magazine and I noticed that Cypher System was getting an award and that um, I thought, oh, this is a great opportunity. They're selling tickets bought a ticket and I called the organizer and said, listen, I'm there to support Cyphers. They're one of our clients and um, just wanted to see if I could sit next to them or close to them. Surprisingly, I was sitting on the same table and guess who was next to me was Gail Robinson, who now is a friend of mine. Don't think that we, I started talking about insurance the first day I met her, we started talking about ourselves. It was just there, first touch, sit down on the table, um, enjoy the award show, say congratulations, and say who I am. And from there, I start touch on LinkedIn, then um, again, um, in different insurance events, and that's how you start building relationship. Even though Gail now is now, I keep calling Gail now, but Gail, Gail Robinson is not at Cypher Systems, we're still good friends. So those are examples on how when you build relationships out in the community, um, you have to be strategic, but great friendships come out of that. So I really am blessed for that. Very blessed for Parker for, for able to 
let me do these networking events and, and see the value of it. I've done a lot of charities, um, committees, volunteer hours, and it's so great to work and do this on, on a, you know, get paid to go out and network because I love doing it naturally. So, um, so those are the tips. Um, I would say the ethics of it, be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. So a lot of people would try and do a sales pitch the first five, min five minutes they talk to you. Um, so you could tell they're newbies. <laughs> so what I try to do is if I see somebody who is young and is trying to network but is intimidated, I kind of get them under my wing and, and go, do, go around in the, in the event and say, hey, I can introduce you so and so and just make them feel comfortable, you know, pay it forward. Um, I think that um, once you become, a, I don't know, like I would say, I've been networking for almost 20 years now, um, you just feel comfortable. And when I go to this event, it's kind of my social life, to be honest, and that's my icebreaker. I go and I tell everybody, you know, how to, how to start a conversation casually without really selling something or selling uh, your business. Um, so it's like, hey, how are you, you know? Um, I might be blabbing too fast, but that's how I talk. It's the Spanish in me. So <laughs> try and see if I can fit everything in under 10 minutes. Um, but the thing is, uh, what I was saying is that you use some icebreaker, do common grounds, you know, just start a small question. Is, how are you? Um, that will open up a uh, conversation. I always say my icebreaker is I'm a mother of four and this business networking event is actually my social life. And you could see how they just re relax and talk about their kids or their dogs. And, and that's how you start the conversation. One tip I do give you is that once that event is over, um, actually during the time I speak to them, if I notice it's a good lead or a good prospect or somebody I wanna continue talking to, I asked them, are you on LinkedIn? I would love to connect with you. That's how I keep the track and make sure if there's anything you need or you know, I'm able to find you um, and referral somebody. So LinkedIn has been really a key tool for me from the beginning, especially in the hotel industry. A lot of our clients were out of town, so that was a good way of us to keep in touch. Um, but even here, like I said, it's, it's, I love LinkedIn. I've been using it for a long time. And Twitter is another opportunity for people to network um, you know, I have, uh, I've met a couple of people that on Twitter before I met them in person and feel like they're friends now. So having networking opportunities, not only in person, but online is very important, especially nowadays with the situation we are in and looking at, uh, what the chamber is doing is awesome to give us that platform on how to keep in touch with everybody. Um, also another tip I would say is become memorable. So a lot of times, you know, you get a business card in a networking event and you just keep it and go on your board. Well, you can't just call that person to make a sales call. It's, people are not gonna remember you. Always build that relationship. That's what networking opportunities does, but also be memorable. So I have a story. I had uh, one property manager I've been trying to get after. Every time I would go again, we have gatekeepers and they want me to break in. So <laughs> my word break in, but basically go in and become friends. <laughs> so what I was trying to do, um, I, I, you know, I kept coming by like I did with the brokers with candies and everything else. And um, one time um, I noticed they were going to get a BA nomination. And that was the first year before I started serving on the committee. And I saw that and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to send them flowers because I was actually, I couldn't attend that event. I was like, going out of town for a wedding. And uh, they still remember that today. So this is, I'm talking about over almost five years ago. So those are the things that you could do when you're building relationship is, you know, do the first step, do the in kind, support them. You know, when I was telling you about the young people that are in the networking events and how you help them, they'll remember that. So those are little things you do. And I do it naturally because I really care about people and I try to help everybody I can along the way but that's something that you could work on to grow your network um once you start your networking is growing don't drop that and don't see them and call them only for sales keep in touch um now with the platforms on social media it gives you the opportunity to know when their birthdays are when they had a baby when their graduation send flowers cards and messages even like their posts and comment on their posts um, that keeps you top of mind and also keep building and nourishing that relationship. 
so I think I've been basically said everything I have to say. I don't know if I'm in my 10 minutes mark or not, but if you have any questions for me <laughs> or anybody in the panelists, welcome to do it. <laughs> thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, and um, thanks, Lori. I do want to mention that you are able to ask questions. Please drop them in the chat and we'll monitor those and take them up in the Q&A. So thank you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, we're going to move on to Mike Clark. Mike is the manager of public relations and fund development for the Windsor Essex Children's Aid Society, where he works closely with the Windsor Essex Children's Aid Foundation. During, the, during his career, Mike has worked in the nonprofit sector, including a seven year tenure as director of development for the University of Windsor, assistant district director of the Essex District of the Canadian Cancer Society, and executive director of the Alzheimer's Society of Windsor Essex County. Mike is a member of the Association of Fundraising Professionals, Canada South, and Greater Detroit Chapters. In fact, in 2008, Mike received the Outstanding Fundraising Executive Professional at the National Philanthropy Day Awards. Mike, you can take over. Okay. Thank you. Um, like the rest of you, I'm sure we all miss our after business events. Um, we've all had to find different ways to network uh, by, via social media and technology. And thankfully we have those outlets today. But anyhow, I wanna thank the Chamber for giving me this opportunity to share with you some of my journey. And uh, I started out being fortunate enough to have a mentor who believed in me and demonstrated to me how interacting with others brought forth gains both personally and professionally. He showed me how to dress for success, how to handle a leadership role, how to connect with others who had knowledge and experience that could, be, that could be impactful in formulating my journey. I started my career in early childhood education, and I won't even go to what year that might have been. I enjoyed the interaction in the classroom and with the children, but I also wanted to see a bigger picture. I, I wanted to explore new ideas and to meet others who had made innovative strides in the field. I was fortunate to land the supervisor's position for the new workplace child care center at the then Windsor Western Hospital. I reached out to others in the sector, both, public, both provincially and nationally, to see how we could make this innovative model unique and progressive. I also connected with St. Clair College and the University of Windsor, as well as other local leaders in children's programming. This resulted in a center that not only provided childcare, but brought forth partnerships in terms of linking the children in the center with patients, seniors, and staff of the hospital and activities and events. We also hosted the first regional early childhood symposium in the area for professionals in all aspects of the field. And that was all by making connections. I completed my degree in communication studies at night while working in early childhood education. I applied for a position with the Canadian Cancer Society as Assistant Executive Director, and later I served for five years as Executive Director of the Alzheimer's Society of Windsor-Essex. In both cases, I had transferable skills, such as fundraising, working with volunteers, administrative experience, much of that which I attributed to networking. What I was missing though, was any significant knowledge of the diseases themselves. At that point, neither myself or anyone close to me had either been, had been impacted by either disease. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. But what I was missing was any significant knowledge and I had to familiarize myself with both the scientific and the human impact. So how did I do that? So I immersed myself in terms of connecting with community partners, medical experts. I attended conferences, workshops, and the most important part of those were networking events or activities. And more than anything else, I reached out to individuals and families who struggled with the complications and the realities of facing such diseases. That networking set me up as a leader in terms of how I can help channel services and resources to those who need it most. I identified at some point in my career where I felt I could truly make a difference in the areas of philanthropy, public relations, and communications. So through positions at the VLN, 
the Windsor Essex Children's Aid Society, and the University of Windsor, I expanded my network in order to connect and collaborate with peers across the province, the country, and the Metro Detroit area. As a result of these connections, I was able to obtain words of wisdom and a template for bringing to Windsor such things as the Chocolate Lovers Brunch, the Community Holiday Fest, the Sugar Plum Ball, the RCMP Musical Ride Twice, and Gourmet Gardens, to name just a few. At the Windsor Essex Children's Aid Society, I was charged with a capital campaign to build a new structure on Riverside Drive for the newly amalgamated Children's Aid Society. This was networking at its best as myself, our campaign committee and administration tried to establish the public image and brand for the CAS, as well as developing a comprehensive campaign for an organization that previously done had done very little formal fundraising. I led the ca campaign to build the Bill and Dot Mazzotti Child and Family Center. The $1.25 million gift from Dot Mazzotti was a result of a personal connection that Dot and her late husband Bill had with the CAS since the early 60s when they adopted their son from the Roman Catholic Agency. It was through discussions, personal discussions, in Dot's living room and with her and her family and relationship building that Dot felt that she could make a difference with her gift. With this very generous gift as our lead, I knocked on many doors, had numerous cups of coffee and many wonderful conversations, all within a variety of networks that resulted in a facility for ch children's programming that is today mortgage free. Again, our Windsor Essex Children's Aid Foundation is wrapping up a five-year campaign that has succeeded its $2 million goal. It's called You Can Write a Child Story, and that describes it to a T. With potential donors and with those that will just lend an ear, I have shared stories of our children and family successes that were attributed to the many programs that the foundation offers as a result of community support. At the University of Windsor, there's a world of resources to tap into in terms of research, academic and athletic achievements and innovation. The most wonderful part of working at the university as director of development was that I had a captive audience of alumni to share these stories with. The adrenaline was visiting 12, 10 to 12 alumni a day by riding up and down elevators on King and Bay in Toronto. Many have not been visited in years. So the first rule of thumb is that you are not there to talk about money, but rather you're there to listen to their stories, hear about their family, reminisce about their time at the university. Those first few minutes of contact can establish a long-term relationship. I never hesitated as well to share my pride in Windsor and to say that this is my hometown. Relationships need nurture and cultivation, cultivation. So take your time. It may take weeks, months, even years to obtain that gift or close that deal. But building on the relationship will create the trust and passion that is needed for the ultimate result. So you ask, what is my style? I guess I say, it's just to be who I am and respect everybody else for being an individual first. Every person is a different being. It's discovering through networking how to find out who that person is, what their interests are, and what their story is. This lays the foundation for future relationship building. So I'll start out with the downside, three don'ts of networking. Don't ask for dollars, a job, or share a contact, or ask somebody to share a contact on the first meeting. Don't monopolize the conversation, and don't talk politics or religion, particularly of meeting somebody for the first time, and especially in this day and age. The do's, listen carefully. Find a common denominator, a mutual topic of interest. Shake every hand, or in this day and age, bump every elbow. Greet people personally. I've got this brief story about my son went into politics and political management in a master's program in Ottawa. 
And I told him it was led by political leaders. I said, shake every hand, follow up on every business card, uh, greet everybody as you can, and just make an impression. Today, he's chief of staff to the Minister of Health in Manitoba. So I'm trying to think that he may have taken some of my advice. And finally, follow up. Follow up soon with a phone call, arrange a coffee, a tour, something like that. If somebody has given you that time to listen and speak with you, follow up and show that interest. And really, I want to just end with a quote by Dennis Watley that says, if you're not networking, you're not working. And really, all of this is about connecting. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. There's some great information that you shared with us. So we will go and um, hand it to Brian Yeomans next. Brian has worked in the hospitality field for almost 30 years, starting in the restaurant business and moving into hotels over 13 years ago. He also teaches at St. Clair College in the hospitality department. Brian has held the role of chair of the downtown Windsor BIA since January 2019. He is working with a great team of young and energetic board members that are as enthusiastic about revitalizing the downtown core as he is. Brian? Thank you so much, Marina. And thank you uh, to the chamber for inviting me to be a part of this uh, prestigious group of people. Uh, and thank you to the visitors. Uh, hopefully you get a lot out of this uh, event. Um, I began uh, in retrospect, when, when Marina asked, you know, what did I, well, how did I start networking? Um, I kind of started before I realized it was called networking. Um, I attended, uh, I, I actually used to follow my dad. He was a, a commercial artist uh, by trade, but uh, every Saturday morning, he was a Jehovah's Witness that would uh, go knock on doors. And one of the things that I, I saw was uh, his ability to build a relationship almost instantly in, in just connecting with, with a person uh, by understanding who they were. And uh, he was extremely good at it. Um, and it taught me a lot about um, listening and understanding who people were. Uh, again, uh, I didn't realize that it was considered networking until I actually got into the, the business field that, that networking is, is all around us. And it's, it's basically just about making connections. Um, when it got into when I got into business, it, I began doing networking out, out of necessity. Uh, being in the hospitality field or sales field in general, uh, networking is an essential part of the job. By odds, the more people that you meet, the more business you would get. Was how we were how it was explained to us. Uh, networking for me um, is more than that. Um, it's a way of getting to know the people in our uh, community in our industry or industries that are beyond ours. Um, that uh, is a way of making another thing is, is it's another way of making those calls to people that, you know, when your boss says you have to make an X number of calls out, uh, do you make that call to that business? These networking events, a lot of these people are at them and uh, they're there for the same reason. And, and you have that opportunity to, to get to know them on a, on a more personal level than by going, uh, right off to their office. So you're getting them all in one area and it is a great opportunity for that. Um, so again, you know those accounts, those ones that you're not sure if you should be going to them um, because you don't know if they produce or not. Well, if they're at that event, you've got a great opportunity to, to ask the questions about their business. Um, as I said, I've worked in, in various fields uh, ranging from hospitality to perishable tool sales. Um, learning from my contacts uh, was the most valu valuable way to move ahead. Uh, the first thing that I learned was to, as I said before, was listen to the people that I was um, meeting. The first thing you don't, the last thing you want to do is just feature dump who you are and what you do. But asking them what they do and who they are is a good way to build that trust, that relationship, um, that interest in, in who you are by showing interest. People like to talk about themselves. Um, so make the first step in being the person to listen to that person talking about themselves and their business. It's been a great uh, opportunity for me to get to know people and to build those relationships over uh, the many years that I've been in this, uh, in the industries that I've been in. 
Um, one of the things, and uh, Elizabeth kind of mentioned that there's a lot of newer people that, that you know, are starting to network and so forth as we're in an industry now where, or in a time now where we may be changing industries. We may be uh, no longer doing what we had done before and, and trying something new and networking events are a good opportunity for you to meet those new people uh, or get into something that, that you may not have realized that it was something that you'd be interested in. Um, what I found uh, from some people is they're very reluctant at first, uh, almost shy at networking events to go and introduce themselves to someone that they didn't know. Uh, just a reminder, they are there for exactly the same thing. You're not bothering them. You're helping them to tell about their business. So them doing the same thing for you. So again, don't be shy, be friendly, just a quick hello, introduce yourself and ask about what they do. That's the first uh, thing you should do when you're at a networking event is take that opportunity to do that. What else helps is as you go to different networking events, the more events you go to, the more people that you're going to end up uh, meeting that you've already seen at other events. You're building these friendships, you're building these relationships, and you're building these possible business opportunities by growing every single time you meet into a new conversation or something new that might have just happened with their business. Um, so again, the, the first step is ask the questions. Um, introduce yourself. It's a great way to break the ice, shake the, uh, the cold feet and get and dive in and get uh, you know, acquainted with people. Uh, how networking has advanced my career. Um, there have been a few times where I've attended events, uh, not just in Windsor, but in other cities. Uh, in the hospitality industry, we have conferences that we go to all over the country, sometimes in the States, uh, depending on the size of the industry that you're in, you may be traveling around the world and you'll be getting the opportunity to do networking events everywhere. Um, sometimes I've met the most random person you don't expect to meet and it happens to be that reason that you were in that city or that industry that you were actually looking to break into or ask more questions about. Uh, the more events that you can attend, the greater the opportunity you have to uh, improve your connections. Um, my personal uh, networking style I've learned a lot from different um, people that have managed events. Uh, one of the neater events that I, I had been to in the past was a, an organization out of Kitchener. And what they did was they had people that would learn about your business and then tell in different hives about your business for you. Because them learning about your business, you're learning about their business, it's, it's kind of a, a new way of, of introducing one another. Uh, some people may have heard of the take my card please uh, events where again it's, it's there's different gimmicks and different uh, ways of, of networking. Uh, look for those different ideas as well. The, the Chamber of Commerce after business events are always helpful. They're always popular um, and a great always great food too by the way. Um, and it's always a great way to to get to know people and uh, again as I said the the people that attend these events do tend to attend more than just one of them. So you'll have that opportunity to meet people and build those relationships at them. Um, so again, I'm very interested in finding out about the other person's business. Um, and then following network events to mimic exactly what Elizabeth had said, I meet with them on LinkedIn. I connect with them on LinkedIn and uh, again, learn more about their business. Uh, the do's and don'ts. Uh, listen. The first thing you should do is listen. Uh, don't immediately just throw all of your information about your you and your business out. Um, a lot of the information is on your business card. Ask them questions about what they do. Uh, not only does it help you build that rapport, but it also tells you whether or not it's something that uh, may benefit your business once you do start talking about what you do. Um, Again, asking those questions about them. And once you have built that relationship and, the, and it does happen, uh, research about their business before the next time you see them so that you've got information, uh, knowing that they're developing something, that they are a member of this organization. Uh, we have a lot of associations in the city uh, that people are members of. 
Uh, I've been a pa in the past a member of the Ontario Restaurant Hotel Motel Association for a few terms. And the connections that I made through that organization was invaluable for, again, moving further in my career in the hospitality field. Uh, it, also, it also helped me to get in to work with St. Clair College uh, at, in the hospitality course as well. Uh, again, I implore you to take advantage. Don't be, don't be shy. Get out there and meet some people. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Again, some really good information. And thanks, Brian, for the shout out um, in regards to our food, our after businesses. We're always really pleased with our venue hosts, and we have so many great ones in Windsor, Essex County. So uh, moving on, we are going to hear from Candace Dennis. Candace is a proud graduate of the St. Clair College Advertising Program and has since been in the field of marketing, advertising, and sales. Branding, event planning, networking, relationship building, and small business success truly is her passion. Candice uh, currently is the Director of Marketing for Blackburn Radio Windsor-Essex. She also heads the Tecumseh BIA as Chair of the Board. From community events and festivals, B2B solutions, and even a number of our own chamber events, you have very well worked with or alongside Candice in the past. Thanks, Marina. Uh, and thank you, Rakesh, and, and the chamber again for uh, having me when you reached out. I was thrilled. Uh, I've quite frankly been missing the, uh, the after business and the chamber events. So thank you for having me, and I look forward to hopefully connecting again with everybody soon enough uh, in some of the ways that we're used to. Um, I'm gonna try not to be too repetitive, fourth up some of those things that I wanted to chat about um, were covered off, so bear with me and I hope I'm not uh, going over too much of the same things for you guys. Um, but just to get started off as everybody else kind of did, you know, how did we get started in networking? Um, and for me, uh, I guess much like Brian too, there were things happening younger that I didn't realize that was really what networking was. Um, and even things that led to some of my career decisions and, and the education that I chose. Um, but of course, you know, coming from an advertising background, a career in marketing and sales, uh, networking is really my life. Uh, meeting new people and building relationships, building career foundations. Um, and because networking works in so many ways, right? Um, are we benefiting each other? Will somebody else think of us in the future? Is it a career-based thing? Is it an opportunity for you, a sale, uh, the business you work for? I mean, networking really is endless because it's just, as everybody said, all about those relationships. Um, so for me, a lot of it started too at St. Clair College. Um, when I was in, in our program for advertising, you know, you start networking there. Um, there were some minor events. But even with fellow students and professors, um, I have to say it's amazing how some of those things, those relationships you start molding, even early on, can come back around uh, in your career. And I've seen those happen, relationships with, um, as I said, fellow students that we graduated together, keeping in touch, whether that be local or perhaps they moved on to agencies in Toronto and I've worked with some there, um, to the professors and, and uh, a variety of them. Unfortunately, there's not as many that were my professors I'm still teaching. Um, but there are some, and that's also helped, uh, you know, in some of the other areas I'm involved in, sitting on the marketing uh, panel at St. Clair College, um, taking in a lot of those interns. So that stuff has really kind of helped keep those relationships strong as well. Um, out of college, uh, my first uh, big girl career uh, or job was with Blackburn Radio. Back then, Cheer Radio, I was working out of Leamington, and I have to say, coming back full circle with the chamber, it were chamber events, um, Leamington chamber events that uh, started me in true networking. I think one of my biggest uh, events thrown right in, and it's a non-traditional networking event, I guess, but the BA, BA Awards um, and a room full of business owners um, and like-minded people, what a great way uh, to meet uh, those folks, meet and mingle with them. And for me in advertising sales, what a great way to put my face out and start working there. So I'd say that's kind of how networking started for me. And then of course, in a career in sales and marketing, it continues because that is um, part, of, part of your life and part of the career. Um, the old saying, you know, how did it help me in, uh, in my career? The old saying that is not what you know, it's who you know. Uh, well, that's not <laughs> completely accurate. Um, part of that is true. Yes, you need to know some things and you need to be able to uh, help people be good at what it is you're trying to do. But at the same time, 
knowing people is very key. And outside of just knowing them, them knowing you. You know, as everybody talked about, uh, it's the relationships. Quite frankly, people uh, prefer to work with people that they know. And why? Uh, technically, or most of the time, it's because those are the people that they trust. Um, whether it be that I'm referring someone to something, working with someone on, on my behalf, I want to work with people that I can trust is going to put my, um, my goals at, at the top with them, right? So we always want to work with people that we trust and networking and building relationships are going to do that. It opens the door and opportunities to meet new people, to build those relationships. Um, you know, for me over the years, meeting the right people and making the right connections strongly advanced my career. Um, I'd like to think anyways. Um, it has been a humbling and honoring, wonderful feeling um, to have uh, past relationships, people I've met in, in different networking opportunities, advance my career. I'd say the last maybe 15 years, um, opportunities came to me, which was lovely. You know, you move on from something and if your phone rings because you've done a good job in the past, um, I mean, <laughs> for me, there was no better feeling. Um, and again, it just showed that I think my hard work um, is why those opportunities came up. But the relationships are everything. People trusting, the people I've met over time that now trust that they can um, put their business in my hands or that I can make the correct recommendations to them. Um, and remember guys, when you're networking and whether that be in sales, um, never dog your competition or what you're not doing at the time. Um, quick story here, I do some, or I used to anyway, do some mentoring for high school students with the Junior Achievement um, World of Choices program. And the number one thing I tried to teach those young girls was don't burn any bridges and watch what you say. Um, the world is very small and you never know when an opportunity uh, may or may not come up because of how we've conducted ourselves or how we behaved. And again, that's all part of networking. Everything is part of that relationship building. And I think that's so important and so key for people to understand. Um, I'm also the chief of Tecumseh CIA and I'm not a Tecumseh business owner. I have worked out in Tecumseh and worked for the Tribune. I worked for Antonio Digital Pizza doing his marketing and relationships there. Um, again, I was fortunate uh, to have counsel ask me to uh, sit on the board. And I've been doing that for now seven or eight years. And that continues to build networking and uh, relationship opportunities. Um, so you just don't forget, I think every opportunity, and it's not just typical networking. Uh, I love the ABs, miss them, um, but it's not always just typical networking uh, events that we have the opportunity to network. And that's why it's so important that you watch how we conduct ourselves, watch the things we say, because um, you never know who that next employer or opportunity or client may be. And it's not always in the networking environments that we think of that we might actually meet these people. Again, the world is small. So consider those things and try to keep that stuff in mind. Um, in terms of a personal style of networking, for me, I'd say it's be myself, be yourself. Um, one of the things I'm told over the years is, wow, you've got such energy. Um, that's just part of me. I don't really know how to tone that down always. And if you're passionate, your passion for what you're trying to do will show through. That said, I talked about my energy. Body language is key. Um, I'm sure many of you, right? You may be excited about something, but the person you're talking to's level is a little less. Uh, it happens to be often. So you've got to kind of watch those body language, watch those cues, know how to talk to somebody else whose energy may be different. Um, they may not be as open um, to your energy level and vice versa, right? If you're really low and somebody's got really high energy, try to come up a little bit. Matching that makes people comfortable. Body language says everything. Um, and mind your own body language when you're out. Sometimes we are not aware of how we act, um, what we might be pushing off that may be standing people off from talking to us. So be engaging and keep body language in mind as you're moving forward as well. Um, just remember networking is always about connecting guys. So it's not just about meeting people. And I think everybody kind of touched on it a bit, which is, make those connections, get that business card, connect with them after, um, you know, don't talk all about yourself, but listen, learn, get some information about who they are. It is about connecting. Just passing off business cards isn't going to do it. Um, but I have to say, it's one of my favorite things about the ABs as well. I think there's always such a good crowd of people eager to do exactly what we're there for. And as somebody who MCs them, I know that you guys are 
uh, mingling and chatting, and that's what it's for, uh, creating those contacts and those relationships. So I love that, and don't forget networking isn't just about the exchange. Um, build that. What, what do you have in common? Why would somebody want to work with you? Um, some tips, so again, know your environment too, right? The AVs tend to be a little funner, a little meet and mingle. Um, sometimes there's networking events that are a little bit more of a professional environment. Um, sometimes you might be in, again, maybe it's not a networking event, uh, perhaps you're uh, just out and about uh, at a festival, at a concert, um, and the right people come around. So know your environment and, and when to act certain ways, when to really put it on. Um, again, Brian mentioned it, initiate that conversation, you know, don't be shy that everyone is there for the same purpose and reason if you're in a typical networking um, environment. So, so don't be shy. Uh, don't be afraid to engage conversation. Um, usually we've got name tags on and, and uh, actually a tip on name tags. Try to keep it, keep in mind where you're placing that name tag. Um, and, and again, sometimes in shaking hands, are you, are you blocking that? Sometimes at a networking event where there are uh, name tags, uh, folks can feel a little embarrassed to try to look around your arm to find that. So the easier you can make it, the better it always is. Um, again, don't talk all about you. Listen, learn some information um, because it's important that, quite frankly, I think everybody kind of touched on this. Um, one of the goals I always have in networking and relationship building is try to be the topic of dinner that night or come up at dinner that night, not in a bad way, right? When you've met a bunch of people or you're a business owner, you've got salespeople knocking at your door all day, uh, it's nice to be the, the one that's remembered. So there's that memorability, memorability again. Um, make sure that you are or do your best to because that's what helps stand out. And if you did a good job, whether it was in that one time or meeting somebody a few times after, um, that's how they'll remember you, whether it be for your service or to pass it on to somebody else as a referral. So again, that's important. And as much as we're talking about listening and learning, um, have pitch ready for yourself. Uh, almost like a little elevator pitch, if, if you will, right? You don't want to talk for days, but know what your product is, whether it's a product, a service, or just you. Um, and more importantly, what's your USP? What do you bring that somebody else might not? What is your unique selling proposition and how can you be more beneficial for this person? If that opportunity is there for you to discuss that, and again, knowing your environment is important. Um, we've spoke to body language a bit um, and that personability being memorable, making that impression. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Again, that if you're in an environment that allows for more conversation, it just shows that you're engaging. It shows that you're listening. Um, quite frankly, you may have questions that that person hasn't considered either. So again, great ways to show that you're a resource, that you're listening, um, and that you understand or you want to learn about that person's business, service, product, whatever it may be. Um, spoke to those. Yes, again, being prepared. Nothing worse than not having your business card on you if somebody wants to take it. But even better than a, a business card exchange, if possible, uh, get that connection right there. Um, you know, see if you can get their phone in or get on their LinkedIn right then and there. You're talking about it. It's a great way to connect immediately. Business card wasn't lost um, and, and you've got that there. So I would recommend that as well. Um, I could go on talking about a lot, guys, but quite frankly, I think uh, everybody's kind of touched on a few uh, areas and I, I don't want to be overly repetitive with you folks on some of what, uh, what the others have said. So um, perhaps I'll leave you there. Thanks, Candice. Really, again, really great information. And I just want to say thanks for the um, heads up on the name tags. Yours truly creates them and mine gets stuck in my hair every time. So I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, again, thanks to all four of you for coming today, taking time out of your day to address our audience. There were definitely some reoccurring themes, which is good because it reiterates the importance of those, but you all have a unique um, perspective and that was really great. I consider myself a newbie in the networking game but working for the chamber and doing these events has definitely you know sped that up for me um, but I can sincerely say I'm going to walk away from this webinar having learned something so at the very least thank you for that. <laughs> um, so I will open it up to Q&A if anybody has any questions I will um, monitor those. I do have some pre um, 
pre-requested questions, I suppose. So I'll go ahead and ask if you'd like to answer them. Again, just raise your hand and I'll call on you. So, um, you know, I did hear from Elizabeth and Brian, especially on this. Um, we have the Chamber Emerging Leaders and these are young professionals. Um, I, I don't know, I don't wanna give a definite age group because I don't think they're even, you know, making it concrete, but these are young professionals who are starting out. So what advice do you have for somebody um, in that demographic who maybe would find going to a networking event, whether it be ours or somebody else's, but going to a networking event and is maybe intimidated networking with a seasoned professional, somebody who's you know done it for years? Elizabeth? Thanks. Um, I, I actually attended one of the uh, emerging, not because I'm young, but just to, <laughs> there was a particular speaker or guest that was going to attend that I was targeting. So again, there's the strategic part of it. <laughs> um, I do, uh, like I said, it's about helping them and mentoring them, right? And whenever you can help someone, that's the best way of networking because they'll remember you. Those connections are important. So um, I also wanted to say, and I forgot to mention that when I spoke, is that sometimes networking does not have to be formal. Not, not, I mean, we're talking about the chamber of more business-like, but if you like to run, I have a friend who wanted to meet people and I said, well, if you like to run, why don't you join running groups and meet people that way? Sometimes when you uh, follow your hobbies and what you like, you get to network with people with more confidence. You're not you're wearing a suit and trying to you know, impress somebody. You're in your element. And I think that's important tip for the young um, people out there trying to network is start small, start going with, you know, get out of your comfort zone little by little, start with groups that you think it's, um, you know, they like stuff that you like and it's easier to talk and then move up. I think that's the best tip I could give. Don't use Tinder for that. <laughs> Tinder. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, okay, so the next question then would be, sort of on the opposite end of this, are there benefits for CEOs or individuals that maybe feel that they are at the top of their career? Um, are there benefits to these individuals going to networking events? Or are, you know, is it done? Mike, I had your hand, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna mute you, there you go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Uh, certainly there is advantages for CEOs and uh, people in top leadership positions to go to networking events. I think for some of us uh, that work directly with those CEOs, it helps give them more of a, an idea of the connections that are out there in the community. It introduces them to the community and it expands their uh, sort of horizon of awareness of what's out there and people actually see that person as the leader of your organization. But besides that, for that leader, I think uh, it's an opportunity for them to look at, um, you know, maybe I could join this committee, this community group, or maybe I can look at expanding my leadership role and I can do it this way or that way. So I think, you know, uh, all of us need to always be looking at new knowledge, new learning, new interests, new ways to interact. And I don't think that matters what level you are at your, in your organization, because there's always ways to change things up and make things new and bring things into a different light. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh yeah, Candice? Yeah, just to compliment uh, what Mike said and add to that, networking isn't for uh, a status or, or a certain uh, individual or level of career. Um, it, it's, it's ongoing, right? There's always something new to learn um, from, from folks uh, or, or people to meet, opportunities out there. So I'd say the, the, the one thing that networking isn't, uh, isn't just for one type of person or, or uh, social status or, or anything of that nature. I think networking is 100% everyone of all categories. Thank you. Uh, we do have a question here from uh, AJ. Uh, the new norm is going to be more virtual events, and if so, what would be the recommendation from our panelists in meeting with people and pursuing building relationships, so virtually? Elizabeth? Um, yeah, I do belong to a couple of networking groups already that uh, we were meeting on a weekly basis in person, and we've turned into a Zoom meeting every week. Um, another one that we used to meet monthly, now we started the Zoom as well. 
um, just to keep in touch and the referrals to keep going because we're a referral group, uh, networking business networking group. Um, in terms to other people trying to come out and network, like this is a great example. You come out and you ask a question, you're making yourself known. Um, then you could probably connect with one of us if you would follow our tips on LinkedIn and say great talking to you or great to learn from your tips. We'd like to connect. So there is possibility to do it virtually. It's just new creative ways. Great. Um, so I, Elizabeth, I think you touched on this um, at the beginning of your uh, presentation. How do I sell my manager on the, import, on the importance of attending a networking event? Um, because we do get um, individuals coming out that maybe aren't you know, the owners, and so they need to come out. And how do you convince your owner or your business manager that this is valuable? Um, well, for me, it was easy because, as you know, Barbara Dickey, we are a restoration company and anybody with a home or business could get a flood or a fire or any type of disaster. So for me, the more connections I'm there, the more chances of getting clients that would ask for, for us. Um, so it was easy sell for me. Um, if you're in a business, um, so let's say when I was in the hotel industry, I did a lot of corporate accounts and a lot of these corporate accounts would not go to the chamber event. I did it as a, like to keep up with the community and, and building the relationship, but it wasn't really my target market. It, the, the corporate people would, I would have to go to maybe CAM, which is I'm a member of them as well as the Canadian Association of Mall Maker. Um, so I tend to those industry, those were probably people that would bring people from out of town. So that was type of my clientele. So it have, you have to see first if it fits you and how do you sell it to your manager. Um, and in the chamber uh, will be a great resource for the community, but if that's not your target, find who it is and, and start from there. Perfect. Candice? Uh, just to, again, go on what Elizabeth said, because I think she, what, you know, is it the right fit? And quite frankly, if it is the right fit, if you've considered it and, 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 networking events are the right fit, um, you would know why and how to then pitch that to your manager, hopefully, right? Because if it's not, if you're just looking for a good time, uh, then don't make, <laughs> don't make that decision. But if it is the right fit, every industry is different, every business is different. Um, if it makes sense, hopefully you can successfully pitch that to the, to the manager. Thank you. And we've got one more here. After asking the basic questions of what do you do, how, how is business, how do you move the conversation along? And I think maybe the younger demographic has a difficult time with that because it's a fine line. How, how personal do you get? How professional do you stay? So how do you move the conversation along? Brian? Uh, read the room. Uh, I think it's really important to uh, be able to read and, and I think uh, Candace had mentioned body language is very important look at the, you know, read their interest in, in the conversation and, and grow from there. Um, asking questions, not just about their business, but, you know, how long have they been in the city? Build those, those communications more than just about, you know, the, their business. Ask about themselves, you know, do they, have they been to many networking events and so forth? And then branch in and say, have you found benefits by attending these before? And, and if so, how? So again, not just asking the questions about what's your business and then how do I move into how do I get business from them? It's, it's more about just building that communication and making it more than just a sales pitch. Great, thank you. Uh, Mike? Yeah, I think adding to what Brian said, uh, the same thing going back to what we all talked about, it's follow up. And I think it's finding maybe that common denominator in your initial conversation and getting the business card and saying, you know, can I follow up with you? But in the meantime, in those 24 hours or 48 hours that before you do that follow up phone call or arrange that tour your facility or anything such as that, you do a little bit of research and, uh, you know, by doing online research, finding out a little bit more about their company, about them specifically, if you can. And then when you're going into that next step, uh, I guess you have a little bit more background and you're a little bit more knowledgeable, which I think is always impressive to the other side. Okay, thank you. So um, that's it, I think, for the questions. So I think I'll close the Q&A at this um, 
at this time. And again, I want to thank the four of you for taking your time and coming on board. Um, if anybody has any additional questions and we don't get to them, um, you can reach out to me at mpoljack at windsoressexchamber.org and we can hopefully maybe direct it to one of our panelists to address. Um, so like I said, it's time to close the Q&A. And before we end today's webinar, I have some exciting news that um, I'm going to deliver and the audience here and the panelists, you're the first to hear. So it's time to reconnect as more businesses are opening in, um, you know, particularly in our city. And I'm pleased to announce the new event that we will be hosting, the virtual Wake Up Windsor Essex. It's an early morning event. This will connect our attendees through networking breakout rooms. Uh, Wake Up Windsor Essex will be free to all to attend just as our webinars are. However, we will have limited number of paid opportunities for um, you to have the floor at a captive audience to promote your business to all. So reserve before they sell out. Now we do have a waiting list. So if you can't um, get into the first slot or the first pod to, to present, we can always get you into the second session. And the online registration, I believe officially opened up at 3 p.m. today. So it is up and we'll get the link into the chat for everybody to check it out. Again, if you have questions, um, some of you may be already familiar with Wake Up Windsor Essex. It's a great way to come out. You have a captive audience, you talk and you're kind of in and out and you get to the office before 9 a.m. and no one has missed you. <laughs> you you've, you've already, uh, conducted business before um, without anything being really disrupted. So this is what we're going to now do and bring it to you virtually um, as a lot of our events and a lot of events in general are going to be heading for the time being. So until we can connect in person. Um, if you have any questions on any of our upcoming events, feel free to reach out to the chamber, to me specifically, um, and then I can direct you. So again, thank you attendees, um, thank you panelists, and I hope everybody has a really great afternoon and that we can enjoy some of this um, beautiful weather. So thank you and we will hopefully see you soon. Thank, Thank you. you, Marina. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks.